Okay, so basically, here's the problem I have. I need to basically make a frame with a couple of braces in it, and this frame is for a tabletop. So, my patio furniture, the glass table top of the bar set had a had a uh, an umbrella in it. The wind caught the umbrella, twisted it, and broke the glass tabletop. So, I can't get that piece anymore. So, I have a bunch of the uh, composite decking from when I built my deck. So, I'm going to make a frame for that for those and just use composite decking as the top. So, I got to weld a frame. I don't have a TIG welder. And I don't know how to use a TIG welder. So, there was my conundrum. Now, thinking back years ago when we, in the air conditioning refrigeration trade, when we first started seeing aluminum coils and aluminum condenser coils, there was a product that came out uh, that allowed you to solder aluminum. And it came in as a kit, basically a little, a little bottle uh, of liquid flux and what basically looked like solder. And it worked, kind of. Not really. I mean, I got it to work a couple of times, but I it was hit or miss. I also tried this stuff, this Aluma Weld stuff. You can get this at home at um, Harbor Freight. It basically looks like this, a little aluminum rod. And you're supposed to be able to heat it up, melt this in there, and it should work. I could never get these to work. I tried multiple times, multiple different alloys. I can't get these to work. For me, garbage. So now in the trade, we're seeing a lot more of aluminum evaporator coils and aluminum condenser coils. So I went down to my local supply, Johnson Supply, and I asked somebody there that I trust, like, what do we got that works on aluminum? And he said, this stuff here, this AL822 from uh, Lucas Millhope, he said, uh, this stuff here is pretty much the cat's ass. So we are going to give it a shot. Now, I looked on YouTube and there is a, a video from the manufacturer about how to use this and basically just said heat it up the flux and everything is already in the rod uh, clean it with clean the joint with a stainless steel brush which I've already done heat it up to 900 degrees and then technically this should melt right in so as far as accuracy goes I just cut these 45 degree angles with a, uh, a miter saw so they're probably not going to be perfect because it you know moved around a little bit as I was cutting it, uh, Nature of the Beast. So all we're gonna do here is kinda get this, basically eyeballing up this inside edge and getting these so that I don't see any kind of gap on this here. Uh, so somewhat there. So we're touching here. We got a little bit of a gap in the middle, but you know, it is what it is. So what I'm going to do right now is clamp this down. And I purposely have this hanging out over the edge so that I don't act anything as a heat sink and uh, soak up my heat as I'm getting this. And I just moved it all around and out of alignment. <laughs> all right, let me, let me play with this and get a better clamp and I'll clamp it down and uh, we'll come right back. Okay, I got you a little bit of a better angle. So all I'm using to heat this up is a, uh, a, a B tank, ox, uh, an acetylene tank with just a number, uh, what is this? This is a number three uh, tip. So this is air over acetylene. So this is just a regular B tank like I use at work. And we're gonna heat this up, see what happens. So there's no flux or anything required, it's supposedly built into the uh, rod here. And 
just getting some heat into our pots right now. And I'm basically just looking for the metal to melt the rod and not the flame. There's definitely flux in there because I can see that moving. And obviously it's not hot enough yet. Alright, now the metal is starting to get hot enough to melt it. Now that's joining it. It's just like solder. Just like working with solder. I wicked right up. I'll be damned, that worked. And that worked really well. That worked really well. I am genuinely surprised by that. I got a little bit of a crack here, so we're gonna heat that up. I am, I am actually blown away by that. That worked. All right, we're gonna let this cool down a little bit and then we'll inspect it. Okay, so the instructions say that you don't have to clean up the flux, but I just scraped it really quick just to show you. I mean, you can see where, where it was, where the gap was, but I mean, it got all of it, even when on the outside here. Yeah. That's covered. I know focusing is focus. And then even the bottom here, if it'll show up, I mean, you got a little bit of a, a blow through here, which that's just a drip, and you can kind of still see the outline, but it 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 draw it drew itself in. So I'm sure if I get a flap disc here and then just clean this up, I mean, it'll work. It's not going to look the prettiest, but it's a table. You're not going to see it. Fine for me. I'm sure I'll get better as it goes along, but I'll be damned if it didn't work. Did exactly what it said it was going to do. It cost uh, 40 bucks for one, two, three, four, four rods, so 10 bucks a rod. Um, let's do the rest of these. Alrighty, so project is complete. This is the one that came with this, and it was glass, and uh, it had a uh, like one bar that went in the middle as a as a like stiffener. And that had the hole for the umbrella. And you can kind of see the hole under there. And the wind just took it and twisted it and broke it. So, um, this deck, uh, when did I build this? 2015, I think. So, these pieces have been just about sitting behind that shed for that long. So, they're a little bit cupped, but they're free. They weren't doing anything. So, you can see here the edges here. This, um, this piece is up because I have a little bit of a puddle on the bottom here, but 
you can see over here there's pieces down so I just got to take a flat wheel and just uh, clean those up round off the corners and then underneath here is the bracing so there's one center brace and then one on top of each of these here and uh, for whatever reason the way this is built these sides are not level with the front so I had to use some uh, some washers I'll get better spaces I'll probably get some plastic spacers but uh, yeah so just need to take this off give it a quick power wash and uh, it's 100% done but those rods actually worked out real well and you can see the outside joint there and the inside joints there so now I obviously wouldn't trust it on anything structural but decorative or you know just a frame or something like this something light duty and you don't have a MIG that'll uh, take aluminum wire or you don't have a TIG or don't know how to use them I guess it's an option.